Next on Worcester News tonight, remembering a fallen Worcester firefighter, how people are paying tribute to Lieutenant Menard one day after he was killed in a fire. Plus, former Massachusetts Governor Deval Patrick makes it official joining the race for president. What people are saying about his bid for the White House. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Olivia Lemon. We started the day off in the teens again, but now we're warming up and it looks like there are more temperature swings on the way. Let's get a first check of our local forecast for more. Hey there, good evening to you. I'm meteorologist Pamela Gardner. We had a milder day today, thank goodness, because that Arctic chill was getting a little old, and now we've increased our temperatures a little bit for this evening. In fact, we stay steady in the low 30s for the rest of tonight, thanks to some cloud cover and thanks to a south southeast wind. Overnight lows won't be nearly as cold as the last couple nights, not even record territory, not even close to last night's low of 15 degrees. We go with 30 degrees for tonight in Worcester. 30 degrees in Fitchburg and a south southwest wind will help to elevate our temperatures even more for tomorrow. We'll be in the 40s, 44 for Worcester, 48 degrees in Fitchburg and lots of sunshine. Some 50s found across southern New England as well. Milder day for Friday, but then we have another little Arctic chill for Saturday. This one doesn't last too, too long and we'll see milder temperatures once we go into next week. But the weekend outlook, there is a chance for some showers, maybe even a wintry mix for the tail end. I'll show you that timing coming up in your 10 day. People in Worcester dealing with the unbearable pain as they remember fallen fire Lieutenant Jason Menard. He died Wednesday while trying to rescue a baby who was reportedly trapped inside a home. Menard also saved his own brothers on the department. Our Chandler Walsh joins us now with more on the community support. Chandler. Olivia, the city says it's been an, a hectic and emotional 36 plus hours. People have been rallying together to support the fire department and pay tribute to fallen fire Lieutenant Jason Menard. Community members are emotional, mourning the loss of Worcester Fire Lieutenant Jason Menard. The 39-year-old died Wednesday, helping two firefighters escape a burning home after they all became trapped on the third floor. You leave no man behind, you know, and that's what Jay did. Stephen Phillips stopped at the McEwen Road station where Lieutenant Menard served to offer firefighters support and pay his respects. It's the downtime that hurts right now. They're just doing everything they can to stay busy. Uh, just to do anything and to have people show up here is very encouraging to them. People have come from Worcester and beyond to lay flowers at the station. Jason Lombardi's dad was a member of this station. He says he remembers Lieutenant Menard and adores him for his bravery. This guy saved a life and saved a lot of other people and I, I, I adore him to the right to the T. The city has set up an official memorial fund to benefit Lieutenant Menard's wife, Tina, and their three children. City manager Ed Augustus says people can show their love and support with donations. Augustus is proud of the fire department's strength in the wake of tragedy. They're amazing uh, in terms of their strength uh, and their focus on duty uh, and getting the job done. Uh, but. There's a lot to process there. Those with friends on the department say they're heartbroken, and Lieutenant Menard deserves a hero send-off. My heart and my tears go out to the Worcester Fire Department and the families. Jay just put aside any of his own selfish needs, anything like that. He did and protected his men. He did what he was trained to do. The city has announced services for fallen fire Lieutenant Jason Menard. Calling hours will be on a Sunday from 3 to 7 at the Mercadante Funeral Home. His funeral will be 11 o'clock on Monday at St. John's Church on Temple Street. Memorial Fund donations can be made to the professional firefighters of Massachusetts. They can be made online or by mail. Chandler Walsh, Worcester News Tonight. Following the death of Lieutenant Jason Menard, many businesses in the community are rallying together to raise money to go towards the family. Our Valerie Bell joins us now from Wicked Winco to tell us more about what some of these businesses are doing. Valerie. 
Yeah, Olivia, like you said, many businesses here in Worcester are coming together in order to support the family through their tragic loss. Here at Wicked Wing Co., not only are they raising money to help support the family, but they are also leaving a seat at their bar reserved for the fallen hero. A Guinness, a shot of Jameson, and an empty seat at the bar. This is what you'll see when you walk into Wicked Wing Company. It's to honor fallen Worcester firefighter Lieutenant Jason Menard. It's kind of just a sign for us to know that we're thinking of them. Um, we leave the seat down at the bar uh, so nobody sits here. Um, and then today we're going to start collecting donations for the family. As the community mourns the loss of Lieutenant Menard, the drink at the bar serves as a reminder of the lives he saved and his final call to fight the fire on Stockholm Street. I think it just signifies one final drink, you know, before closing time and, or if you will, the irony of last call. Unfortunately, this isn't the first time a beer and a shot have been poured for a firefighter who lost their life in the line of duty. The scene was similar to when a close friend of Jonathan Richmond and another fallen hero, Christopher Roy, died battling an apartment fire in 2018. To even hear that a firefighter died in Worcester, you just, you kind of just, just close your eyes and you're just like, not again. Bruce City also raised money for firefighter Roy's family, and they are doing it all over again for the family of Lieutenant Menard. It's, it means a lot. It's just, you know, we get a lot of firefighters, police officers in here as guests, and to give back to the community in any way possible is, is a plus for us. It's called Pints for a Purpose. All the money goes to the cause. If you donate a dollar, you receive a free glass. And if you donate five dollars, you'll get the glass and a coupon for five dollars off. Every dollar matters in times like this, you know, for the family. Both managers said yesterday following Lieutenant Menard's death that their bars remained very quiet. They hope today that they can raise enough money for the family like they did last year for Firefighter Roy. Reporting in Worcester, Valerie Bell, Worcester News Tonight. The city of Worcester is set to receive a $3.5 million grant for Pickett Plaza. Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito announcing the grant today and showing what construction in the canal district around Polar Park will look like. The grant is part of the MassWorks infrastructure program. The state says the money will create a gateway to the revitalized canal district. Paw Sox chairman Larry Lacino says it will not only benefit Polar Park, but businesses surrounding the area. The neighborhood park, it's also an entrance, one of the entrances into the ballpark. It's a recreational area. It's a place for small businesses can operate. Uh, I came to congratulate the lieutenant governor, the city manager, and the mayor, and all those uh, connected with their teams for making this a reality. The plaza is expected to be used by the public year round and not just during baseball season. The state will award more than $72 million in MassWorks awards across the Commonwealth this year. Former Governor Deval Patrick files paperwork to enroll in the New Hampshire presidential primary today, just hours after officially announcing his run for the White House. The move makes him the third Massachusetts politician this election. Our Matt Restino has more. Former Massachusetts Governor Deval Patrick announces he is running for president in 2020. This time is about the character of the country. This time is about whether the day after the election America will keep her promises. Patrick served as Massachusetts governor from 2007 to 2015. Worcester Chamber of Commerce President Tim Murray served as Patrick's lieutenant governor. He thinks Patrick's background will help him stand out from the large field of Democratic candidates. I think he's got a, a good story and experience, and I think it's something that people will, will respond to. Um, and I think he's, that's really what motivated him. Many people here in Worcester remember Patrick as a good and effective governor and are excited about his entrance to the race. He did a great job, so if he did a great job for the state, why can't he do a great job for this country? I think he was a good governor and um, because he's, um, I think he's a bit more moderate than um, Elizabeth Warren, um, I, I think he might appeal to more people. It remains to be seen whether Democrats will welcome another challenger to an already crowded primary. A poll from Monmouth University last week found 74 percent of Democratic voters are happy with the current field. Only 16 percent say they want someone else to enter the race. In an appearance on CBS this morning, Patrick said the crowded field is not a deterrent to him.
You can't know if you can break through if you don't get out there and try. And, uh, and I think in many respects, and we've talked about this, I've been waiting for a moment like this my whole life. In Worcester, Matt Restaino, Worcester News Tonight. Massachusetts may become the first state in the country to ban flavored tobacco products. The state legislature voted 127 to 31 in favor of approving the ban and imposing a 75% excise tax on nicotine vaping products. The ban also applies to menthol cigarettes. The bill now heads to the Senate. The city of Worcester passed a flavored tobacco ban. It went into effect on January 1st of this year. Another marijuana retail store gets the go-ahead to open a new location in Worcester. Cultivate Holdings received a special permit from the Worcester Planning Board Wednesday night. The Recreational and Medical Marijuana Dispensary plans on opening its new location in the area of Selfridge Street and Hope Avenue. They were the first of its kind when the state in the state when they opened their first location in Leicester in 2018. Cultivate is now the 10th business in Worcester to receive the special permit to allow the sale of recreational marijuana. The planning board approved the special permit after Cultivate provided a traffic study for the proposed area. The study took a look at the potential impact the business would have on traffic flow. The proposed site would be 9,550 square feet and have 52 parking spaces. The Worcester Regional Chamber of Commerce is proposing three years of free rides on the city's buses. As part of a transportation funding proposal released this week, the chamber is arguing the WRTA should eliminate bus fares as part of a three-year pilot program to attract more bus riders in the city. According to a report from the Worcester Research Bureau, last year the WRTA had its fewest passengers since a bus driver strike in 2005. Well, with the congestion and all the, uh, you know, growing population here in the city of Worcester, we need to find out a way to uh, kind of take cars off the road. The Research Bureau's report shows the WRTA collects $3 million per year in fares, covering less than 15% of its annual operating expenses. The report also states the WRTA spends more than 800000 just to collect fares.